Hey guys, Majime here, and have you ever wanted to play Super Smash Bros. Melee, or something like Knights, or, uh, not that, uh, Conquer Live and Reloaded, uh, let's see here, Panzer Dragoon Orta, Sega GT 2002, or Jet Radio Future, or even Shenmue 2, using a PS2 controller. Now you may be wondering, how is this possible with just one controller? This could be the one controller you need for that generation, and maybe beyond if uh, you have certain adapters. But, this is possible through the uh, Game Elements Gemini Universal Controller Adapter. It converts any PS2 control pad for use on Xbox or GameCube. And uh, it works with steering wheels and joysticks. <clears throat> Now, I don't have any specific um, steering wheels or joysticks to test this out on. I, of course, do have uh, PlayStation pads. This is a PS1 pad, but I assume it'll work pretty much the same way. If not, then I'll, uh, I'll grab a PS2 pad. But this was easier for me to get a hold of. So, we're going to give this a try and see how it works out. All right, quick thing before we actually do open it up, we take a look at the box, or the packaging, that is. It's one of those blister packaging, meaning it is a pain to open up, although I've already pre-cut the side, so I'll be able to open it. Pretty plain, you see the device, pretty easy. For use with PS2, Xbox, GameCube, because it kind of does that all. It, it involves all three of those. All right, on the back, uh, again, it tells us why it converts, and it shows us a picture. And I guess that's a PS2 pad, but it looks like a third-party one. And, uh, at first I thought it was a 360 pad. Um, you know, the size is kind of-ish to one of the newer controllers, but, um, it isn't. It's a PS2 pad. And so you have the pad, and you have the steering wheel, and it converts to the two other consoles. And that's pretty much it. Alright, opening it up. If I can... Alright. Ooh, it's got that, uh... It's got a really strong smell. Smell of, uh... Plastic. So that's... That's good. Oh, oh, good. We have... A manual that's actually taped on. Even better. Taking a look at that, let's see, control, wait, convert a control, that's a new word, or new uh, way to put it, just giving us some information, using blah blah, yeah, it's telling us some information about it, but I imagine this, I imagine this won't be that difficult to use. Oh, it does give us uh, what each thing maps to, which is pretty cool. If there's any reason to hang on to this, it's for that very reason. And I'm thinking uh, this will... this converts pretty well. <clears throat> converts pretty well to uh, what it's going to be. Alright, looking at the GameCube. It looks like it converts pretty well, but there's really only one way to find out. And that's trying it out. But before we do so, we're going to take a look at the device itself. It's very simple. It's black. It's got their logo. On the side, we've got the mode. So you either go to Xbox mode, and then it'll default to the Xbox controller. And we've got Nintendo GameCube mode, so it'll default to this side, which is just a normal plug. All right, the back. Made in China, blah blah. And the other side, see if that'll come into focus. It says, well, I know it's not coming up very clearly, but it does indeed say wheel on the top, and on the bottom it says gamepad. And right now it's in gamepad mode. Go to wheel. Back to gamepad, that's what we're going to be trying it on, because that's what we have today. Now you see I have connected the controller, or connected the adapter to the controller and to the Wii itself, while we'll be using the Wii in this demonstration. We've got Melee in 
and already the analog button is turned on and d-pad at least works so far uh, load from there because that's what we want to do all right can we skip it we can skip it with start press start all right select has no function as it doesn't have any kind of parallel and using the right the uh, oh sorry left stick does indeed do stuff so let's just go to first player mode training we're going to do something very simple here okay and we're going to pick uh, Mario. Oh, wait, those are the buttons. Alright, so, uh, not a lot of colors there. Uh, oh, wait, that guy. Black. Okay. So we're going to pick these two characters. And, oh, it does, it actually has Rumble. That's, that's surprising. I didn't think it would have Rumble. That's really cool. Alright, so, uh, uh, Evo is coming up today. So, I don't have Final Destination, so we'll go with uh, that one. And, might I add, this isn't even a PS2 pad, this is a PS1 pad. So, the fact that it works... Alright, that works. Ooh, not seeing any C function. Oh, wait. It's, it, it's doing stuff. Alright, that has its normal function, normal function, okay, got shield, shield, grab, and probably grab, yeah. Not seeing any C-stick function, but that might be because we're in training mode. Let's actually, let's actually finish and go to a real match, because it might be a back button, a back button's triangles. So. No, it's not. No, that's a switch thing. Okay, back button will be... Oh, the B button is now uh, square, so you've got to kind of train yourself to remember that. I just go to classic mode. Oh, sorry. And, uh, big Jigglypuff. Uh... Oops. I like the rumble. The fact that it actually has rumble. So... If your PS2 pad has Rumble, then any game will... I'm not... I'm getting... Not C-Stick function, but I'm getting... Weird zooming in. I don't know if the game is usually like that, but that could be a problem. But, let's... Yeah, so I'm thinking it's not reading it as the other stick, because right now I should be able to move... Okay, that... No. Okay, I have no idea how to do this game, because this is moving that. And that, of course, is the normal stick. So I'm not sure if I'm missing something, or if this is supposed to function like that. I'm actually not that knowledgeable on Smash. But I know C-sticking is a thing. And that just doesn't seem to be an option with this pad. So I guess if that's not an issue for you, then there you go. I'm wondering, it does have functions, so... Is this what it's supposed to do? I, I don't know Smash that well, so... Uh, let's... Let's try a different controller. Alright, my next test will be a... More of a... By nature PS2 pad. This is an Alienware PS2 slash USB pad. It is either PS2 or USB, and this USB pad can be used on a PS3. So we're going to try this out to see if it can be used on a GameCube slash Wii as well. And from what I've tried, it's got the same function as the... I don't even know what this is about. It's got the same functions as the PS1 controller had. So that's pretty cool. So, oops. Can I hold the shield? Yeah, I can. Alright, that was just me being weird. Alright, so it does in fact work, and I actually don't know what this button does. But, uh, yeah, this... These seem to be working together.
So, so far the adapter seems to be working pretty well. I don't know what the deal with the uh, camera is. That might just be a one player mode thing. But, um, and then in this mode, of course, the stick acts like the stick. And it works pretty well. As far as this goes, uh, these two buttons on the back, uh, I forget what they correspond to. I think they might actually be uh, these buttons, but they don't exist on the GameCube, so we don't even need to look at them. So, so far it's been working pretty well. Next, we're going to try out a fighting game. Alright, so after some weird finagling, I was able to connect the PS1 cable, or sorry, PS1 controller to the Xbox via the adapter. And it was weird, because I switched it to Xbox mode, didn't take, I switched on the other side, which was the wheel and gamepad, switched those, and I don't know if it was just timing with the console finally reading it or what, because it, it happened. So, looking like we have about the same, uh, stuff as we had before. I'm gonna go to training mode once again and of course this is a little easier to understand the mapping. And uh, okay, I uh, goo and ooh, that's how do I how do I pick the guy I want? Uh dinosaur guy. Okay, we're gonna be fighting him. So as you can see it's uh, working pretty well. There isn't really any lag that I'm noticing anyway. And, yeah. So, and we've got buttons. Now, we see that the PlayStation controllers do indeed work, but I do have a theory. And this could be proven, you know, true or false, but... I want to try something such as the Sega Saturn arcade stick, or, you know, if this works, then a normal controller will work as well. So, we're going to try out this on this to, well, this is why I have right now, so we'd be playing that. But, you'll be wondering, that is not the cable that plugs into this new adapter that I've got. Well... That's true, because we have the KO Sega Saturn to PSX converter that I mentioned in another video, and there, there's a whole video on that, and I'll, I'll link that, but we connect this to this, then this to that, to that, and let's see if it works. Alright, so we've connected the Virtua Stick to the adapter to convert it to PSX, then that converter to go from PSX to Xbox and we're back here and it's not perfect it might just be the uh, kind of a well it's obviously not perfect and uh, the fact that it does that I'm not even sure why it does that there might be some kind of bug in the uh, either the controller or the the adapters I mean I'm I've got a lot of adapters going here. So this doesn't seem to be working too well. But let's see if a more traditional uh, Sega Saturn controller will do any better. Alright, now connected to a more traditional, uh, what you think of as a Sega Saturn controller. It fares a great deal better, but still seems lacking. Now, it's not going to show it in the video so great, because that's just how the sort of thing is. That not every time I press a button, it'll actually react to it, which, you know, is pretty bad in a game. But when it does work, it does work very well. I was able to throw off a few sonic booms uh, in pretty good succession. But again, the directional buttons, that's... When it doesn't work, it's kind of annoying, and it's really not a good thing. So, it's technically plausible, and it kind of does work, but honestly, it's not worth your time, because missed inputs are just the worst thing that can happen to you in a fighting game. Alright, so after, you know, thinking, okay, what if this is like a computer, you know, you reboot it, maybe it'll work better, and the game actually froze on a 
blue screen of uh, after loading some stuff. So I don't actually know if it's the controller because I kind of doubt that's the issue and it might just be the game or maybe even my console. Who knows? But for sake of experimentation, we're going to try Panzer Dragoon Orta using the Sega Saturn pad, which I don't remember if this used the D-pad or if the, the game rather uses the D-pad or the left stick. But I do know the right stick is used to enter Berserk mode, which will not even be available. But let's see if we can do anything with this on that. Let's see what we can do. And if it's still as buggy as it was in that Capcom fighter. Or if it was just the game being kind of weird or the console needing a, a reboot. Who knows. So, and of course with this you need to hold start and press A to actually give you the start mechanism. Alright, so it's reading every press so far. So this is actually working out a lot better than the Capcom fighter we were just looking at. So maybe that reset was something that helped or maybe this is a better game. Who knows? Let's just go to new game and see how far we can actually get. Let's go to easy mode because it's, uh, well, it's a one-handed Saturn pad at the moment. And of course, well, we'd have to look at uh, two guides. One guide to see where the PS2 maps to this pad, and then where the PS2 maps to the Xbox pad, which admittedly that one's a little easier to understand. And if, can we just skip that? Yeah, I think we skip that. It's actually not too hard to press start once you know what to do. Because you just press start, hold it, and just let your thumb go down to the start. And it works out pretty well. So, so far it's working out pretty well. And I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed being able to play this on that. Uh, you know, for... It's something that you don't really see. And... Alright, this is part of the game, so I can't really skip this, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. Now, this is going to be the true test, because this is going to be gameplay rather than, you know, just menu navigation, which is... Oh, crap, now it's already started. Alright, this is... This actually feels pretty good. I mean, it's a D-pad, so you're pretty limited in your actions, but the D-pad on this thing is pretty good. So... I, I don't even know what these buttons do anymore. Oh, that was kind of cool. Uh, that doesn't have any function. That doesn't have any function. That doesn't have any function. That Oh, that's shooting. That's a pretty good function. Oh, and that's... Uh, oh, that's actually still that. So that's pretty cool that you'll be, you can actually play it using this. And I would actually say, other than the Capcom Fighter, uh, you can actually play Panzer Dragoon Orta with the Sega Saturn pad. It just... You lose the Berserk function, which... I actually haven't played through this game, so I don't know how essential it becomes. But if you want to make it a little harder, I guess, or if you want to feel a little more classic, you do have the option. So that's really cool, and this is plausible, and it can be done, and that is just really cool that you can do that. Doing this with one hand is uh, a little more difficult than I thought it would be. So, uh, it can be done. And... I actually have another theory, but, you know, just to make sure this is all like a clean reset, I'm going to turn off the console and then switch to it, and then I'll be back with you guys. Alright, if you're like me and you and you can see that this controller does actually work, you're thinking, man, this is awesome, how could I make this a little better? And for a game that's, you know, like Panzer Dragoon, we think that, you know, the 3D pad would be perfect. Now, while, you know, it's still has the uh, d-pad which is good and it's got the buttons which they're different buttons which makes it harder for me to kind of remember where each one of them is or which you know where I am when using it um, we're gonna see if this works and first of all we need to make sure that the d-pad mode works so we're gonna be using this first then if that works then we know the controller is you know functional with this thing and we're going to see if the analog stick works. I don't actually remember if the analog stick is compatible with the adapter. I don't actually think it is. But we're about to find out. And actually using this start function with this one is a little harder. 
Press start to begin. Not good signs. Because it's not letting me press start. And I am currently in digital mode. Maybe if I go to analog mode, it'll make a difference. Nope, nothing nothing happening when I'm using this controller. So, so far I can't even use this controller at all uh, with this with this setup. And of course there's there's a lot that could be in the way uh, connections not being there and but uh, so far not uh, not a lot of luck. And I'm actually gonna disconnect and then reconnect the controller to see if that'll uh, jump start it or you know make it work because this stuff is like what a decade old sometimes it uh, just doesn't work as well as it should and it's back to a loading screen which these games tended to do all right no skipping here I would be a little disappointed if I wasn't able to use this just because it would be really it, it's cool that we can use it with the regular pad which I guess is asking for a lot already and yeah it's it's just not going to like this now while this one isn't compatible I guess at all and the regular pad is let's see if the virtual stick was because it's the virtual stick is pretty much just a pad turned into a stick. I mean, literally, it does not add any buttons. It adds, if anything, it adds the function of um, a lot of a lot of switches and turbo modes and all that stuff. But that's really not unnecessary in my opinion. But we're gonna try it out. Okay, so once again, after some finagling, where uh, the virtual stick just wouldn't work at all to, you know, unplugging everything, well, actually not that part, but unplugging the KO uh, adapter and, you know, plugging it back in, same with this, uh, the controller itself, it actually did start to work, and once it, you know, once it actually did start to work, it, it works great, so I'm going to once again try the 3D pad, and maybe it was just the case where at first it didn't work, so you get to unplug everything, it's annoying, granted. But once you have it set up, I think it might be worth it. So, I'll be right back. Just wanted to tell you guys that this did work. So we can put a big check over that one. And over that guy too. Alright, so I actually did a little investigating. Because I had just forgotten that this pad just isn't compatible with the, with the adapter. Because once you... You can see that blinking light. Normally... Uh, well, not normally, but when there's nothing plugged in, it's blinking. And just now when the uh, 3D pad was in there, it was still blinking. But if we put something like the arcade stick, which we've proven already that, you know, it does indeed work. And sorry for doing this off camera, but we get a solid light. So the problem isn't with the adapter at this point. It's well, not with this adapter, it's with the uh, older adapter that just isn't compatible with 3D pad, which I understand that the 3D pad doesn't... The adapters usually don't like the 3D pad, which is understandable since it does add a weird dynamic which is a detachable thing and uh, analog uh, triggers and uh, the, the stick uh, that has a weird dimension to it. But um, not being able to use this is a bummer, but... The fact that we can even use a, you know, a Saturn pad at all is pretty neat. Then, um, I guess we'll take a look at, uh, one more game. One more game and, uh, see if it'll play using the converter. And we might, we'll try a couple things. Alright, so something I actually didn't notice before was that, um, you know, the A, B, X, Y, I think actually perfectly corresponds at least as the face buttons to the Saturn pad. If I'm wrong, then uh, tell me, but I'm pretty sure it corresponds pretty perfectly. And of course the uh, L and R, and then really only have to figure out these two, but I think they probably translate pretty well. But we can indeed play this game using, um, using the 
the fight stick, which means we can use it on the pad because this is you know, same stuff. Uh, ooh. I just bought something. Or, er, wait. They're okay. There's skip. Yeah, there's no way to skip this. Alright, so. Uh, there's a whole opening sequence which I just spared you guys. And, um. Decided to try out, you know, can I play Shenmue using this pad? And technically, uh, at least for the fact that uh, you use the D-pad, or you can use the D-pad to walk, uh, you can play it like this. So, I mean, uh, of course you don't have a camera. Uh, I actually don't know if the camera is the right stick. If the right stick is the camera, then you no longer have camera or uh, right stick press. But other than that, you're not... You can actually... you. Uh, in there you can actually play this. So here's the uh, control scheme for free quest mode anyway. So R is run, D-pad is walk, which is great for us because we don't have a stick. Um, L, the buttons are great. Okay, the only thing we don't have is look because that would be the right stick. And it kind of makes sense because this game, Shenmue 2 was originally on the Dreamcast, which didn't have a right stick, so, you know, there's that and... It wouldn't have helped because you don't have it. So, I guess the more authentic-ish uh, experience would be to use this. Because, technically, you've got the D-pad, so you can actually walk around, you can move. You have all the other buttons. The only thing you can do is look. So, if you need to look at something, you kind of have to awkwardly get yourself to, to look at it. So, I mean, it's doable. And that's really option awesome that you can actually play... Shenmue 2 on your your uh, Xbox with the controller it was originally meant for well at least the uh, the original Shenmue started on the Sega Saturn so it's kind of cool that we can actually go back to it harken back to it all this time later so bottom line if you bought this to use a PS1 or PS2 controller on your GameCube or Xbox does it work? Yes. It works great, and honestly, in Smash, it's been working just fine. But it's something where, in my mind, the attack button is this giant button, and the B is, like, over there. It's it's taking getting used to, but once I get used to it, I think it's going to be really fun uh, having these shoulder buttons. They're on both sides, so that's really cool. And so this is pretty much a classic controller, you know, before it was a thing. So that's really cool, and it's definitely worth it. It was like less than 10 bucks to get this converter. And, you know, who doesn't have PS1, PSX, PS2 controllers lying around somewhere? So this is really awesome. On top of that, if you have anything that's even through a converter, you can use a Sega Saturn pad, which, you know, if it doesn't require the analog input, and you can get by with just the D-pad, it is totally playable. Um, that Capcom fighter is weird. Maybe it was just, you know, finagling the converter itself. But it worked. And when it worked, it worked good. You can play Shenmue 2 and Panzer Dragon Orta with it. With the exception of losing a feature such as Berserk Mode in Orta. And the right stick to look around in Shenmue. Otherwise, playable and very impressive. You know, normally when I have this uh, final thoughts on a item, I'll have the actual device right here, so you can see it in you know part of the presentation. But it is so good that I'm still using it, and I'm playing Smash with it right now, and it works really well. The cool part is, or I guess the funny part is, I'm going to be playing with this controller, but you're going to see Smash on the screen, and you know the Wii's back there, and you can't even see what it's hooked up to, so it's going to look really weird, and it's kind of funny to me and kind of cool. And I'm going to carry this on to uh, Brawl, Project M, and uh, Smash U once, once that's out and my friends get the adapters. And I'm going to come in with this. Come on, man. Let's play some Smash. What do you mean? I got this converter. And Bammo. So, Mandrame, out.